welcome back for another video. My name is Josh Castic, and today I'm, this is going to be my Avengers Infinity War review. Sorry guys for uh, taking forever to upload a video, but I've been really busy with school, too much work, um, I just didn't have the time. I've been watching a lot of TV with my family, and uh, also I've been getting a lot of YouTube notifications, and it's hard to keep up with that too, so... Uh, you can see my problem. Uh, now, if you notice in these last few uh, videos, some of these videos, I have like a new background with uh, the Star Trek um, thing over there. And that's because, uh, well, I got rid of my dresser during the early summer. And uh, now I can uh, have this. I have a chair I had for years from my brother. So I can sit here and uh, have a new background for these videos. Also, if you're wondering where that Star Trek thing came from, yes, that has not always been in my room. This is, in fact, my used to be my dad's, but they put it in my room because there's no room in my parents' room. So uh, that's why that's there. Now, uh, let's get into my review, all right? So how this is going to start off is going to be starting my breakdown of how the movie uh, movie goes. Now this might not all happen in order, but each don't forget I will talk about each scene and what happened exactly and summary of what happened and uh, my overall thoughts of the movie. And, um, well, yeah, that's pretty much it. And so let's uh, let's talk about. All right, so the movie starts off. Uh, from the uh, Thor, Ra Thor Ragnarok um, post credit scene, but like a few minutes after where Thanos already kind of blasted the ship and is on board. All right. Now we find out later that half of the Asgardians actually escaped. W who stayed was Loki, Heimdall, Thor, and Hulk slash Banner. And some of the Asgardians. Well, all the Asgardians on board were pretty much already dead as we walked in. We have Thor clutched in Thanos' uh, hand. And, or kind of like that. And, uh, you know, you have Emni uh, M -M Ma. Uh, actually, I think is one of the best Black Arrows. I wish they didn't kill all of them up. But we'll get to that point later. Um... Uh, but, uh, so basically, yes. And then, like, he's Thor, or we find out later, we, well, not Thor, I mean, Thanos has the Power Stone, which we find out later that, uh, by Thor that, uh, a week or two, I think two weeks ago, he said exactly that, um, Thor, um, Thanos attacked Xandar and uh took the power stone unfortunately a lot of people didn't like the fact that we didn't get to see thanos attack xandar but the movie's already long and to be honest with you, i don't really care but also there it, there's a little part that doesn't really make sense because if he did why didn't the guardians of the galaxy knew about it and you know like help them out like and i'm pretty sure they're kind of, I don't know if they're really on the greatest terms, but, I mean, they helped out in the first movie, so I w would be surprised that the Guardians of the Galaxy wouldn't go and help them. But, besides that point, um, basically, yes, yeah, so Thanos has the Power Stone, and uh, he wants the Tesseract, which we all know Loki took, fr uh, took. he literally, it's a scene in... Uh, Thor Ragnarok. Now, we don't really see Loki take it, but he stopped and looked at it, so we can really assume that he took it. Now, which is really weird, because a lot of people are blaming that it was Star-Lord's fault, that it's Th uh, Thor's fault, but might not... Have you ever think it's actually Loki's fault? Because, literally, like, the Tesseract could have been destroyed with Asgard. Uh, or... If it can't be destroyed like that, it'll be floating in space somewhere where Thaos would have a hard time finding. All right. Uh, I mean, yeah, I know it is. If that happened, then 
then there won't be any Infinity War because he needs to have the Tesseract, but that's what I'm saying. You guys don't realize that you guys are saying it's all these characters' faults, but you don't actually see how it actually kind of is Loki's fault. I mean, he is the one that forgot... He's the one that took the Tesseract. I mean, literally, it could have been lost in space or destroyed. So, and we know Infinity Stones can be destroyed, and which we'll get to later. Um, so, now, um, yeah, so, like, basically what happens is that Loki reveals the Tesseract, and basically he's about to uh, walk up to Thanos, and he's saying... Thor, the sun will rise uh, un, up uh, on us again. Uh, un, I don't remember the exact line, but it's an interesting line. Uh, we hopefully actually go somewhere because, in fact, it really did it. Um, but unless we don't know, because there's Avengers Four, which is supposed to be a sequel to this movie. Um, but before. When Loki looks like he's about to give the Tesseract to Thanos, he says, well, we have a Hulk. And then the Hulk comes in and starts being Thanos. Now, Thanos didn't expect it, so yes. But then, Thanos, he did not use the Power Stone because we know for a fact that the Infinity Stones only work be when they light up. So, the Power Stone wasn't lighting up in this case, and he, well... I wouldn't say brutally, but like extremely beat Hulk to a pulp. All right. Then, after he did that, Heimdall sent the Hulk to Earth using dark magic, and then Thanos kills Heimdall. Yep, Heimdall is gone. So, yeah. All right. And then they get the Tisseract from Loki uh, and stuff. Well, Thor. Did try to got up and try to attack, but uh, Emily Maul used magic and uh, used metal to trap him, uh, so he couldn't do anything about it. Uh, then Loki, kind of, I think, uh, basically, then uh, eventually Loki tries to stab, um, stab um, Thanos, but Thanos uses the space stone to stop him and then strangles him. Death. Loki's dead. And he says, there's no resurrections this time. So, we don't know exactly what that means because Loki didn't really die in Dark World. We thought he did, and I don't really think that counts as a resurrection. So, it most likely means that Loki did die in the first Thor movie and Thanos brought him back to life. Um, so, uh, from that point... Um, then, basically, Thanos and the, uh, things, they, basically, he uses the, Thanos uses the Power Stone to kind of destroy the ship, while he uses the Space Stone for his, the Black Order, the Sons of Thanos, and him to escape back to the ship. They leave, and Thor's ship is, explodes. Alright, that's it for that scene. The next part, we have Hulk, well, no, not Hulk, I'm sorry. They're in the Sanctum, the New York Sanctum. Um, we have um, Doctor Strange in his um, casual clothes. He's not wearing his, you know, uniform and stuff. And you have Wong, uh, which is actually fun because the actor who plays Wong is Benedict Wong. And... So, you know, Wong, Ben, you get the point. And what's even more interesting is both the actor who plays Doctor Strange is uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. So they have the same first name. That's even more interesting. But, um, but that, yeah, basically, uh, they bo they're walking. They just got off the stairs when Hulk crushes right through the Signum into the stairs. They, you kind of hear the Hulk sound, and then we, the Doctor Strange and Wong uh, walk up and see Bruce Banner. All right. Then the next part, we we go to um, Tony Stark and Pepper Potts talking. Um, 
I, uh, Tony Stark had this dream where they had a child, uh, and the child's name after uh, her uncle, um, Morgan, I think it was. I know it's like a name in the comic books and stuff, but uh, he feels like it's basically how if you go to the bathroom in a dream, you wake up and kind of went to the bathroom. Uh, so, but he thinks this time, it's like having the baby, but she's not, uh, like, expecting or anything. They're not even married yet. They're going to be married, which is actually probably in what's going to happen at the end because, uh, Josh Brolin said that the Avengers 3 and Avengers 4 together is like a, a, um, what do you call it? A, um, Shakespeare play, and in the, the, uh... Shakespeare's play that's about, like, joking, funny, all that, ends in plays. Uh, I mean, ends in a wedding, I mean, I'm, uh, and, uh, so, basically, it's most likely at the end of Avengers 4 is gonna be a wedding of Tony Stark and Pepper Potts, alright? Uh, I think that it's probably gonna happen, but, uh, there's even, like, a, uh, a leak that there's a scene with all of them, even though I don't think it's going to be all of them because I'm pretty sure, like, unless I could be wrong, I definitely know Tony Stark is probably retiring after this, after they get married, so he's not going to die. I doubt that, but I, I really think Captain America is going to die. I mean, he's the likely case, but he could also retire or, like, something happens where he doesn't die, but he can't keep going as Captain America or, like, fighting as a hero or anything like that. But I feel like, you know, it's hard for him to retire. I feel like the best way for him to go out is by being a hero. I, I just don't see it any other way. But uh, Hulk and Banner, I think this is going to be the last movie because... It's supposed to be, his story is supposed to be a spread of one movie through these next movies. And I don't think he's going to get another one. I mean, Mark Ruffalo is not, is getting up there in age. I think the only actor that really wants to play Thor, I mean, the only actor who wants to keep going is Chris, Hen Chris Hensworth, who plays Thor. But he also kind of might want to quit acting because he wants to be with his family uh, because acting takes him away from his family, so that might not actually happen. Even though he says he wants it, but he also wants to be with his family, so he might actually quit being Thor. Uh, so I don't know what's going to happen with Thor. Uh, but uh, now I'm getting off a tangent here, so let's go back. So, you know, Pepper Potts, they're talking about maybe then they're not married yet. When Doctor Strange comes in and... Uh, says that, uh, it tells Tony Stark about what's going on, alright, so, and then, uh, we see Bruce Banner appear after him and tells uh, Tony Stark what's going on, and they both leave, and then uh, the next scene is them talking about, uh, talking in the sanctum and stuff, and, uh, uh t telling Tony Stark about how Thanos is the one who sent Loki in the first Avengers with the army and all that. So basically that event gave uh, Tony Stark PSD uh, because he, he, well, uh, he had a nuke. He grabbed the nuke and went into space and launched into the thing. But yeah, he, uh, so Tony Stark has bad mojo uh, or whatever you like to call it after that movie and, uh, after that event, and now he really now this is his chance to finish that off and leave that in the past. But uh, basically, they're talking, and they told Bruce Banner that basically Captain America and them are not really on speaking terms. They basically kind of broke up because if you remember from Captain America: Civil War, they split up and had a battle and and stuff and all that. But basically, he has to start talking. He uh, he was going to t uh, call Captain America when the wind started picking up, and then they looked outside and see people running. So they go outside and find out that they're here. 
well, only two of them, but there's like a circle space, like a spinning circle spaceship up there, and they're walking out uh, to, um, and then Emni Mall and um, Colbert City, and um, basically the Hulk version for the team, uh, or strong. I don't know what do you ever want to call that, but. Uh, Emily Ma is like the Doctor Strange of the team, and like Cobra sitting is the, um, is the Hulk of the team. Uh, and then you have, uh, I, I forgot the main two's names, but, uh, them, you have a husband and a wife in the Black Order, and they're the leaders. Uh, the leader is kind of like a Captain America. Uh, and stop like the Captain America version of the Black Order, and then um, she's kind of like the Black Widow of the group, but uh, of the I think that's what we can call it. Oh, oh, by the way, Hawkeye's not in this film, uh, because Hawk is said online that Hawkeye and uh, Adam, uh, uh Ant Man, I mean, why did I say Adam? That that makes no sense, sorry. Uh, Ant-Man, uh, so Ant-Man and, uh, Hawkeye are basically on house arrest, and, uh, so they're not, uh, in this film. Now, we actually know that, yes, he was, Ant-Man was on house arrest, but, uh, he sneaked by, uh, but that's for later for Ant-Man Wasp Review. Oh, I should have said spoilers. Yeah, there might be some, uh... Spoilers for Ant-Man the Wasp if you haven't seen that possibly all right that was a little spoiler I'm sorry I should have said that in the beginning uh, but uh, that's not really a huge plot point well I guess it is Eek. well I'm sorry about that uh, uh, but uh, from that point that's a later on thing let's just uh, go on from this all right so you have Emily Maul we find out uh, Tony Stark asks Bruce Banner to Hulk up. Hulk doesn't want to. Now, we originally thought that Hulk got brutally beat by Thanos. They, he was scared. But the real truth is basically he doesn't want to help Bruce Banner anymore. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, Bruce Banner stayed back while Iron Man walks up in a cool motion and activates his um, nano droid suit. And they basically launch Kobet City away, but uh, Emni Maul attacks, and he's really powerful, and he t he gets Doctor Strange and Tony Stark and all that. We also see later uh, Peter Parker is on a bus with Ned, and uh, basically uh, the bus driver is Stan Lee, Another Stan Lee cameo, which we now know he's a agent for the Watchers, which originally thought he, we, he was a Watcher. That was a theory, but technically the theory is somewhat true because he's an agent, a, agent of the Watchers. So that's why all his cameos are the same. He's he's just looking out at the heroes. So that's actually pretty interesting. Uh, but uh, yeah, so basically uh, Peter Parker tells Ned to make. A uh, scene so uh, Peter Parker can get out and dress up as Spider Man. So Ned says, We're all going to die. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we have that point, and uh, uh, Peter Parker escapes and, uh, the bus and able to put on a suit. Uh, Spider Man's going after Emily Mall. And eventually he gets Doctor Strange and they all get hit. They, the uh, ship used a tractor beam and got Doctor Strange and Spider-Man and all the, the up there. Uh, basically, uh, what happens then is that uh, basically Spider-Man's going up. He gets on this sh uh, ship and he's outside the ship. And it's going out into space. It's being hard to breathe. He's losing his breath. And Iron Man's flying. Sets out his new booster. Because his suit can literally become anything. Because of nano nanos. 
they, the shoot's not permanent in any form. It could literally create anything out of that, like a huge blaster uh, or stuff like that. And so he creates a huge um, uh, rocket booster and he flies up. And then he sends the iron spider suit up to Peter Parker uh, so that he can breathe in space. Now, the Iron Spider suit in Avengers Infinity War and Spider-Man Homecoming are way better than the one that's in the comic books. I mean, it actually looks like, you know, a for real Spider-Man suit with the, the red and the blue. It just makes sense. And um, it looks way better than the gold and red, I have to say. It just, it literally makes a lot more sense than the gold and red. Uh, but... It has everything that the Iron Spider suit has with the, like, extended legs, uh, like, things in the back. Uh, which will make him more like a spider because now he has eight with the four and then his legs and hands. And, uh, but, yeah, so he sends that up. But then he activates the parachute because he doesn't want Peter Parker there. All right. Then... Tony Stark gets onto the ship, and then he gets a call from, um, uh, from Pepper Potts, and she's getting upset because he's on that ship. She's upset that she's on here, and the way they're talking is actually a reference to a, another movie where a person gets onto something and someone's calling and tells them it, it's. I don't remember exactly what movie it is, but I was I watched a lot of YouTube and I found about I find out a lot about this stuff. Um, like I said, I've watched a lot of YouTube. There's a lot. I mean, like, a lot. I know, I probably know a lot more than most people. Because I watch so much. But, uh, but, not that I remember everything, so I guess that doesn't really count anyway. But, um, then, um, so, he gets on thing, and that ends that scene. Then, we go to... Scotland, uh, there's actually the name of the place, the town that they're in, but, um, uh, Vision and, uh, Wanda Maximoff, or aka Scarlet Witch, are making out, uh, per human being making out with a droid, see, my problem with Vision is, if you remember from Age of Ultron, He's part machine, but he also has cells, like living cells. So he can't be fully a droid. I mean, yeah, like you can technically rebuild him, but I'm saying he literally has he cells. I mean, like actual cells. If you watch the movie, you would know that. Uh, but you know, whatever. I, I don't. I don't. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, that that's not really in, of importance. But he's basically using powers so that he can look like human. But yeah, they're making out, and then in the next scene they are getting out. They're telling each other, "Well, we need to stay." And then they see it in the news that uh, what happened in New York City with uh, the whole ship and stuff. And then now they're saying we have to go. When Vision gets stabbed by the leader of the Black Order. And um, Scarlet Witch was, was trying to heal up that wound. But they're just being really beaten up by the uh, Black Order. Even with Scarlet Witch's powers. she's They're not doing so well when uh, Steve Rogers... Uh, now, he's not Captain America in this movie. Even though a lot of people in the movie call him Cap, but that's because he mostly goes by that. But in the movie, for Avengers Infinity War, he goes by... Well, actually, they don't really state it, but in the comic books, that would be Nomad. He is Nomad. A man without a country. That's what Nomad means. Uh, and that's what he is. Now, we have... Uh, uh, Black Widow with blonde hair because she's also been hiding for betraying Iron Man and all that and helping Captain America and stuff and like all that and then uh, uh, we have that and we have uh, Sam uh, aka the Vult um, 
AK Falcon, sorry. Uh, I almost said Vulture, that's a villain of Spider-Man. Well, I don't know why I would say that. Uh, Falcon. And, uh, they, sa they saved, uh, Sky Witch and, uh, Vision. Uh, Vision's still injured and stuff. And then, um, after that scene, we have the Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, on a track to, uh, find a, a, what was it called, a, um, oh, it's just stress signal, the Asgard ship, Asgardian ship, I mean. So, uh, basically from that point, we have, um, Alright, okay, so they find the ship already kind of destroyed and stuff when Thor lands on the shield of their uh, cart and then his eye opens up so he's not dead. Uh, they bring him in. Um, they have funny moments where Star-Lord was like upset where his, love, his lover Gamora was like feeling his muscles and like uh, Drax was saying... This guy is like if a pirate and an angel got married and had a child. Well, it, in a certain point of view, I he's kind of right. I mean, his father had the eye patch at all, and his mother. Well, I wouldn't say she's an angel. She, in that case, she would be. She was definitely a beauty. I would have to say, um, not not in the case of that, but like more in the care of the story and stuff. So she, it's technically kind of true, uh, but uh, that's besides that point. Um, uh, then basically, like, Thor, uh, like, aw awakens and all that, and he basically, you know, Star-Lord and Thor going at it, they're talking about where, like, Gamora, how Gamora is the daughter of Thanos, and all that, and then basically Thor t telling her, well, your father killed my brother, and my best friend. Well, he didn't say that. He just says his best best friend was killed earlier, but uh, to uh, Rocket later on in the movie. But uh, they're basically talking, and then they eventually him and uh, Rocket and Groot take the uh, the other the ship that's attached to the. Uh, um, why can't I forget the? I forgot the name of the ship of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, oh well, doesn't that um, probably re remind me in the comment section? Uh, comment section about what the name of the ship was. I kind of forgot, but they they use the extra ship and they leave. Well, because they find out like Thanos is going to know where to get the Reality Stone, and then so the Guardians of the Galaxy are going to go to going to, uh, no, uh, nowhere, and uh, nowhere, but with, there's actually a funny line, not in the movie, but there's a line in the movie that's, there's a line that says, nowhere is somewhere, I, and I guess in some point of view that really doesn't make sense, but it makes kind of sense to me, because, uh, if you're like, nowhere, that spot is still somewhere, so... I mean, it kind of makes sense, but uh, if you guys don't understand what that means, or you don't get it, well, just think about it, or don't. Just forget about it. That's up to you, alright? Um, so, yeah, they go to nowhere. And now, after that scene, this... I'm probably going to get it out of order from this situation, from this point on. Uh, because it's like kind of goes everywhere, and I don't exactly remember what order. I, per I think it's basically goes back to Earth, but I could, I could be wrong. No, I don't think it goes back to Earth yet. No, I think it goes back to the spaceship where Tony Stark is on and Doctor Strange and Emily Ma. Uh, so. Uh, basically, we have, um, Tony Stark is going on, he's looking down, seeing, uh, well, it starts off with Emily Maul torturing, uh, Doctor Strange because he can't, 
he can't get the time stone off of Doctor Strange because he put a spell on it and stuff. Uh, so yeah, so uh, Doctor Strange has one of the Infinity Stones um, and stuff. And then you have Tony Stark looking down at them when Tony Stark gets spooked by Doctor Strange's uh, cloak. And then Spider-Man appears. Yes, Spider-Man disobeyed uh, Tony Stark. Well, really, I don't know if that's disobeyed because he didn't really give him an order. He just got off, but kind of did give him order. I don't know. Basically, Spider-Man's on there, and they make he Tony Stark gets upset, but he basically um, helps um, him and Spider-Man make a plan about the uh, about. A reference from an the alien movie or predator uh well, i don't think it's predator but alien and so tony stark uh comes up to ebony maw says a line says you dare come and then ebony maw kind of does one of the classic lines that's been done over i mean it's not exactly the same line but like blah 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 he's saying uh don't how dare you get on the ship blah 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 something like that it's not exactly words but it's lines, but Tony Stark is talking. He says, "Oh, it's not my plan," or something about a pop culture reference. I says, "Oh, I forgot earlier." He calls Emily Mall Squidward. That's fine if you know SpongeBob. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what SpongeBob is. So, uh, he that was an early scene. But basically, basically what happened is Tony Stark. Uh, Blasts the ship and Emily Ma flies out. Now Doctor Strange was about to fly out too when uh, Spider Man came in to uh, rescue him, and he uh, he almost went out with Doctor Strange, but he was able to get Doctor Strange out. And then Iron Man frees the hole, and they're all on the ship and stuff. And like Tony, they're all talking, saying we need to go to Titan. This ship is set. We shouldn't go back to Earth. Now it's been a better idea to go back to Earth because then you have more people. But oh well, it would have been a smarter idea. So in that case, it's technically Tony Stark's fault because they really should have gone back to Earth to have a bigger fleet. It would make more sense. But um, basically, Tony. Uh, um, Doctor Strange tells Tony Stark that if it comes between him, the boy, and the time stone, I'll go for the time stone. Uh, that's what he says. Um, and then they go to Titan. That's it. That ends that scene. Emily Wall is dead, just like Alien. Oh, and there is a scene where Emily Wall is flying in space, just like in Alien. Okay. I never said I never saw Alien, but I know this because, like I said, I watch a lot of YouTube. So, um, but uh. Then we go back to Earth. I'm pretty sure. I'm 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 a hundred percent sure about that. Uh, basically, the, we opens up with uh, Colonel Rhodes talking to General Ross or Senator Ross or whatever he is now, and a group of heel. He says, "Well, I made my choice and uh, stuff." And then basically. Um, Captain or Steve Rogers, uh, Black Widow, um, Vision, and uh, Wanda Maximoff, and Sam Walken. Ross tells uh, Colonel Rhodes to uh, arrest them, but Colonel Rhodes just basically what what he does. Well, he shuts them. Uh, he shuts uh, Colonel Rhodes. Uh, um, um, not Colonel Rhodes, uh, what am I saying? Ross and the other, uh, group of people that's, because they're all holograms. And then they said, well, I'm with you guys now. And then Bruce Banner comes in and tells them about Thanos and everything, basically what's coming and, and all that. And, uh, that pretty much has that scene. Um, then I think... Think that then it goes to nowhere, uh, where basically they're having a plan. Uh, they're, they're on the ship, and they're planning. And basically, we have uh, Gamora asking Star Lord to uh, kill her because she knows something that would be useful for Thanos, and she 
uh, she doesn't want that getting into Thanos' hands. Then Star-Lord agrees, and then they start kissing. Finally, they finally have Gamora and Star-Lord actually showing, like, yeah, they've been building it up, but finally, I wanted that romance to happen. Yes, guys, I am a big romance person, all right? Uh, well, I don't necessarily want to read a romance on its own, but I like it when a romance is in a adventure or sci-fi or anything like that. Like, I don't want to read some, like, romance book or romance movie that's just a ro romance movie. I, I don't want to, but I like it when there is a romance subplot, subplot in a movie that I like, like, event, like, you know, like something with sci-fi or adventure, superhero, uh, all that type of stuff. That's what I like. I feel like there's no good story. There's not, uh, yes, there's good stories without uh, love, romance, but I feel like a lot of good stories has at least, uh, at least a, a romance plot point in it. So, I finally glad that Star Lord and them together they kissed it. I I I really love that. But then it gets ruined by Drax. He's just chewing like he's invisible. He thinks he's invisible, and the reason why that's because I don't know. Like in some uh, post credit scenes, basically like Gru is dancing and stuff, and like. Uh, Basically, he, uh, Drax looks over and then Groot stops and he's like, huh? Like he doesn't see him or something. And I, that, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of dumb, to be honest with you. But I don't know. That that's the uh, point in that. Um. So, all right. So uh, now uh, we have uh, moving on from uh, there. You know, with Drax and then stuff. Now they finally reach nowhere. And they basically... Uh, Star-Lord and... Um, what's her name? Uh, Mantis. Now Mantis in the comic books and in the Guardians of the Galaxy anime series is actually a villain. So they kind of changed it for the movie purposes. But uh, yeah. I mean Mantis uh, basically... Uh, and Star-Lord stopped Drax from making a mistake because he wants to uh, attack Thanos. Now Thanos is basically like putting his feet, his foot on uh, on um, the Collector because he has the Reality Stone and and stuff. But Drax wants to go in. They put him. They put Drax to sleep. And then Gamora. Star-Lord tells Gamora to go right. But she goes left and then tries to attack Thanos. He stabs, uh, she stabs him and he fa falls. But, and she starts crying because yes, she hates Thanos. But she was raised by Thanos and she still has feelings. Uh, she still has uh, somewhat, I guess, love, I guess, in her heart for Thanos because she raised her. But, uh, so that's why she starts crying. But then it turns out that Thanos has actually already got the reality stone, and he unact he like st uh, stops using it, and it shows nowhere is already in fire and burning, and then he comes out that that Thanos that she stabs or was dying was actually just a fake rea uh, from the reality stone, and then she grab uh she basically uh. Then tries to take the uh, weapon, try to kill herself, uh, but um, Thanos used the rally stone to uh, turn that thing into uh, into uh, w uh, bubbles and stuff. And then Drax goes in to attack, and Thanos turns Drax into cubes, which is basically like the comic books, although it's not Drax that gets turned into uh, cubes. And then he turns Mantis into strings, and that's also in the comic books. But that's not Mantis in the comic books. I think it's Nebula. Nebula, if I remember correctly, I could be wrong about that though. Uh, but uh, I watched a YouTube video on that. But it's been a while, so I could possibly be wrong on that. 
but I don't exactly know the full um then basically Thanos grabs Gamora and then Starlock goes and says I told you to go right and says and and he he try he's pointing at Thanos or no he's pointing at the Thanos but Gamora is telling her to point it at me at uh, pointed at well that's what she says meaning that she wants Star Lord to kill her and then now the whole bubble I think when I said she tried to stab herself and turn the bubbles I I don't know. I thought that she did that twice, which doesn't kind of make sense. Because I know she did that, like, near another scene earlier, but I'm pretty sure she tried to do it twice. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure she did that. I could be wrong, actually. I don't know, forget that. I will forget that I said that, uh, about the bubble thing. But, yeah, then, like, and then... Uh, fast set, uh, uh, tell story says, well, do what she says. And then he go uh, like, she, uh, he's saying, I told you to go right. And then, uh, and she, she says, please. And Thanos basically keeps saying, well, do. And then he walks, uh, uh, point, uh getting closer. Like, like, uh, Starler has a gun to, a gun to Gamora. And she, she says, I, uh, Gamora says, I love you. And then, um, Starler says it back, and then he actually does it. But Thanos turns uses the rally stone to turn it into the gun into but well, the, the turn the fire into bubbles and then the gun into bubbles. So uh, then Thanos and Gamora leave using the space stone, uh, and then basically. Uh, Drax and and uh, and uh, Mantis go back to normal, and uh, Star Lord's gun goes back to normal. That ends that scene. Um, we have uh, then they basically leave, and that, well, like I said, it kind of ends the scene. There. Then I think it has Thor. And Rocket, them talking and stuff, and uh, they're in their ship and Groot and stuff. They're all uh, doing stuff, and uh, basically Rocket gives uh, Thor that eye that he got in one of the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy movies. I think it's the second one. I'm pretty sure it's the second one. Uh, that he did that. Um, so he, so Thor gets his second eye back, and or gets his eye back, uh, and stuff. And they go to Nevavalir, which is the home of the uh, giant elves who make the weapons for Asgard. Um, now, from there, we have. I don't think they they make it there. But I don't think a lot of it kind of go. There's a lot of back and forth and all that and stuff. Um, but yeah, they get there, find out that it's kind of like black, like dark. The star is dead, attack, and they then they get attacked by a giant elf played by. Uh, oh, come on, Peter, Pe Peter, what, Peter? I know his name. I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. Uh, um, what is his name? I know it. Huh. Cushing? I don't think it's Cush Peter Cushing. I don't think it's Peter. No. Maybe it is. I don't know. I forgot his name. I know his first name is Peter. But he's a really famous actor. I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. Uh, I think it's Peter Cushing. I don't know. I, could, I think I'm wrong. I know it's Peter. I know his first name is Peter. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, from there, they battle, and then they find out that, um, uh, Thanos, he, he built the gauntlet for Thanos because he is threatening his to kill his people, then he kills all his people besides him, and 
the re why in the Asgard and saved them. Now Thor says, well, because Asgard was destroyed, but. Actually, the real, what at least that's what Thor believed. Now, that was all confusing because, wait, if this is recent, then how the uh, post credit scene in Avengers Age of Ultron makes sense when he has the gauntlet. Well, it actually turns out that basically with all the events going on and Odin being missing all that and stuff and... Uh, stuff because I'm per dark. The Dark World becomes before Avengers, right? And we know Odin was sent to Earth before Avengers: Age of Ultron, and so basically that means that without Odin, that with all these events going on, they totally forgot about Nevelir, and so Thanos had a chance to go there and attack and get the Infinity Gauntlet and all that. Alright, now, they don't build Thor's hammer yet. That comes into later, but then we have we have that scene and stuff. Then we have the, on uh, back on Earth, we have uh, Captain America, uh, Bruce Banner, or well, not Captain America, sorry, Steve Rogers, um, uh, Bruce Banner, uh, Black Widow, uh, Scarlet Witch, Vision, all variety, all arriving. Oh no, wait, no, not yet. That comes later. I'm forgetting. I'm sorry. They actually talked about how about Vision first. No, huh? I think that um. Yeah, they talked about how Vision, they should destroy the stone where Scottish Witch is powerful enough to destroy it. But Steve Rogers says we don't trade lives, even though, well, wait, so you rather save uh, Vision than, like, half the universe? Because that's what Thanos' mission is. He wants to wipe out half the universe. Now, you might think that's kind of evil, but in a certain point of view, he's basically doing it for actually a good cause. Because he uh, feels that the universe is overpopulating, and so the resources are running out, and soon people will die. And so people are dying and stuff, so he said, and paradises are falling and all that. So basically, he says that by wiping out half the universe, he basically saved the universe from a rapid population and less uh, the run out of resources, and it becomes paradise and all that. Uh, so yeah, they're talking about uh, that entire uh, talking about that, but they're all. And this is when we find out about Ant Man and Hawkeye and all that, and then all this situation and stuff like that. And they're just talking, but then they're going to Wakanda, and that ends that pretty much that scene. Then we have uh, we're bet with Gamora and. Thanos and then uh, Thanos they're on his ship and uh, well I think we first see uh, Tony Stark and all of them on the ship saying they're here or something and then it cuts to Gamora on the ship and stuff and they're talking and stuff and it does show a flashback scene of uh, Gamora uh, Thanos at, like attacking Gamora's planet and where he takes her, uh, t he takes Gamora, and he kills his, uh, kills his mom. Now we only see her mom, but we're also pretty sure her dad's in there. But uh, now, uh, my dad's in there too. But yeah, so we see that he takes Gamora, and um, and trains her to be an assassin. Then all uh, that, like Gamora, uh, he's telling Gamora that. I told you to look for the soul stone, and uh, I, and then basically saying, I believe that you would find it, and then, uh, Gamora said, I'm sorry you're disappointed that I didn't find it, but, and he says, oh, I'm not disappointed because you didn't find it, I'm disappointed because you did find it, and you didn't tell me. Alright, just some, something like a father would say. Uh, 
then they basically use the space stone, they find Nebula, and basically he's going he's he used the uh space stone and the power stone, the power stone to pull him apart, but space stone to pull push them back together. Or it's the other way. I don't know. He's just using them and he's literally like hurting Nebula until Gamora uh gives up the whereabouts of the Soul Stone and she finally gives in and they go they it's um of Vlad Vladimir uh Vladimir? No I think it's Vladimir Vladimir Vla, uh, yeah Vladimir Vla, Vla, uh, whatever it's pronounced I'm gonna uh, Vlamir, I think it's Vlamir, yeah, Vlamir, I think, I don't know, it's hard to pronounce, I'm just, so they go there, uh, to get the soul stone, all right, it turns out that, uh, but we, that Red Skull, which I personally believe that he was teleported, I don't know, a lot of people thought he was disintegrated or dead, but that looked like space. It looked like he got teleported in space. And Avengers Infinity War uh, proved me right. I always believed that. I don't know why people thought... I kind of get why people thought he kind of got disintegrated, because in a certain point of view, it did look like he got disintegrated, but I don't know. I always thought he was teleported. Uh, so, I guess, I don't know. Um, that doesn't make me better than the people who thought that. I just... I always felt that that's the case, but, uh, then, yeah, so, Doc, uh, so, we have, um, so, Red Skull is there, and we find out that, basically, he is trapped there as the, uh, gatekeeper to the Soul Stone, uh, he's not, he's, he's, like, not destined to have one of the stones and stuff, and the whole, then they go there, then he tells, Thanos that in order to get the soul stone you have to trade something you love and then Gamora laughs and says Thanos doesn't love anything but she's wrong Thanos turns around and is tearing and Thanos, uh, Gamora says come on really uh you're crying because you couldn't find the soul stone and then uh, uh, um, Red Skull saying, "Oh, that cry is not because he doesn't love anything and he can't get the soul stone. He's crying because he loves you." And then she's like, "What? Okay." And then she then tries to stab herself. Now this, I'm for sure this is correct. She tries to stab herself, and then he, uh, Thanos uses the power stone to turn it into. Into the uh, uh into um, bubbles, and she he says, "I'm sorry, Gamora, I failed my mission. I uh, uh, failed my mission uh, before. I'm not going to fail it again." And then he grabs her and throws her off the cliff. And the next scene, we see him waking up in water with the soul stone in his hand, and he puts it in the gauntlet. And that ends that scene. Gamora is dead. Unfortunately, I didn't want her. I did not expect that. I did not want her to die. I wanted Star Lord and Gamora to, uh, you know, have a happy ending. Which I'm pretty sure Gamora is going to be coming back. Uh, yes, I know she didn't die. She died like physically, like a died died. Uh, she died. I mean, like a per kind of, but. I don't think she's going to stay dead, but, like, I really wanted, like, Gamora and Star-Lord to basically, you know, well, I don't know, get married and fly off into the, the, uh, unknown of space. That's what I wanted, but, you know, whatever. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So, then it goes back, no. I think they go on Titan. I think it's Titan next. They reach Titan, and then we have Tony Stark, Spider Man, and Doctor Strange meet the rest of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, and basically, they both thought that was, one of them was working for Thanos. Uh, and there's some weird lines where it says, uh, Star Lord says, Where's Gamora? And then, Th uh, then Tony Stark says, I'll do you, I'll do you what better, 
Well, well basically, Tony... St um, wait, no. I forgot. Star-Lord has Spider-Man and... Uh, Spider-Man. Tony Stark has Drax on the ground. And so they basically all have pointed guns at each other and stuff and all that. They're all, like, really... Stuff. He says... Tony Stark says, I'll do you one better. Who's Gamora? And then Drax, who's like right, like, is on the ground, like uh, under uh, Tony Stark, uh, or Iron Man, uh, slash Iron Man, he says, I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? Now, that didn't really make sense, but it's fine. Now, if you actually add dead to that line, uh, why is Gamora dead? It'll make the question a lot more sense. I mean, yeah, they don't know Gamora's dead. I'm just saying the context of us human in the real world, not in the movie, but in the context if they said why is Gamora dead, it'd be it make the question make more sense, but also really, really sad, okay? Uh, but uh yeah, you know, whatever. Uh but besides the that question it was funny and then uh they basically both find out that they're not uh, enemies and all that, and do the, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm trying to recall everything exactly, um, because it, it goes a lot back and forth and all that. Well, that's one of the weird parts talking about this. That's actually going to be kind of annoying part of, of this. Um, but then we have pretty sure. It go we go back to them, um, uh, Cap um, Bruce Banner, Steve Rogers, Black Will, Scarlet Witch, Vision, uh, oh, um, Falcon, and War Machine slash Colonel Rhodes, all arriving on, uh, Wakanda, t well, actually, I think a little bit before that they arrived, I forgot there's a scene where, um, basically, um, uh, oh yeah, Black Panther, T'Chaka, oh no, T'Challa, I'm sorry, T'Chaka, T'Chaka is his father, T'Challa, uh, um, T'Challa and, uh, and, uh, Okoye are walking off to see, um, what, who they're calling the White Wolf, uh, Bucky Barnes, to give him a new arm and ran for the Battle of Wakanda, or the Battle of uh, the Wakanda again. The yeah, it's the Battle of Wakanda. Wak yeah, Wakanda. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, I'm repeating. That. I was just making sure I pronounced that correctly. Um, then. Then we have them arriving, and then they're talking about uh, Steve Rogers talking to Bucky. He's definitely back to normal. He's friendly. He's not. He's definitely fixed, so that's a good thing, and all that. And uh, they're all preparing to uh, go off to prepare to battle Thanos. And then we have later on, we have them uh, vision where they're basically talking with. Um, with, uh, what's her name? Uh, oh, man. Sorry, I'm not really doing good with names today, am I? Um, yeah, I'm really doing bad today with names so far. Um, so we have, uh, T'Challa's sister. Um, come on, come on, come on. Come on, we know, man. I'm sorry, I'm really doing bad uh, names. I'm really having a hard time with names today. Um, I should know her name. Come on. Mm. All right, let's just move on because I'm not. Uh, it'll come to me later. But basically, sh sh the sister, she's saying, "Well, wait." Why didn't you do this? It make more sense, but whatever. So she's gonna try. It'll take her a while, but she's gonna try to take the uh, mind stone out of Vision's head, and uh, so yeah, it's just gonna take the 
yeah, I mean, there isn't really anything to say about that. And they that pretty much ends that scene. Then, I don't know if I took, then I, it goes to Thor. Pretty sure it goes to Thor this time. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure this is all out of order. I don't I mean, I probably already got all this already out of order, so... I mean, as long as I talk about each scene and everything that makes more sense. Um, so, basically, Thor um, and does this cool thing to uh, uh, make the rings uh, start spinning again to open up the star, the, the dying star of Nevelir, and then to create a new weapon to kill Thanos. Uh, Stormbreaker, which is actually, Stormbreaker is actually the weapon of Beta Ray Bill, who has not appeared in the Marvel MCU, but the, uh, Stormbreaker in the movie is more like Thor's, uh, axe from, uh, from the Ultimate Comics, but, uh, yeah, they basically, what happens is that the star thing kind of locks, and so, like, the door to open it, basically, where the, the star blasts. So, basically, Thor opens it up and gets fully blasted by a star, but he creates the hammer, and then, it, well, it creates the axe, I mean, it's not really a hammer, it's more of an axe, sorry. They, they create the axe, now, he was looking for, uh, the, um, the, uh, Peter Cushing, I'm pretty sure it's Peter Cushing, no, but the, uh, giant, uh, elf, uh, and, and, E tree, E tree, yeah, E tree is his name. Uh, e tree uh, is looking for a staff, but Groot picks, like, uses his uh, ability to uh, make, uh, uh, and puts the uh, axe together, and then cuts his arm off, and so his arm basically becomes the uh, handle, and then they. That's pretty much it for that scene. Now, I'm pretty sure that's not... How, like, I know that's a scene, but I don't think that actually where it takes place. Then we have a scene where we have them on Titan, and then they're all, like, talking and making a plan. And, like, star -Lord's kind of being dumb, and, well, they're not really raised to be smart, like Tony Stark and Spider-Man. And then Spider-Man's telling Star-Lord how his his pulp culture references aren't correct and you're all wrong and all that but uh and stuff and uh stuff like that and then they make a plan and then they and then um M M M mantis points out that dr strange is like doing something weird with the time stone and tony stark asked them and he saw 14 billion is that correct i i could be in i don't know i don't remember the exact number but turn and then tony stark asks how many did we win and he says one um and then that pretty much has that scene and then it goes back to wakanda and they shield the right for bow the ships are starting to land and then uh Kobit Sinian and uh, the wife, I think. Uh, I don't know who, what's her name. I'm like totally blanking names today. I don't know. I'm forgetting her name. I'm sorry. This is really bad. I I don't know why I'm doing so poorly with names today, but um, could have probably should have done more research on this but uh, um basically then yeah so they walk up to the shield saying they all say well you can't uh, you can't go there but she's bad she says we have an army they both have armies and then cap like captain america uh black uh widow and a black panther i think 
those are the three that walked up and uh, talked about this thing. Or I think it was, unless it was Kermit Rhodes. I, I don't know exactly, but I remember exactly wh what was what. Uh, yeah, I don't remember, but yeah, they basically go back and uh, they ask, Hey, so are they going to give up? And says, no. All right. Of course they're not. And then we have the Outriders from the comic books coming out in Lowe's. And they're basically trying to break through the street. They're literally like destroying themselves. It was kind of weird. Like it was disgusting. But you know. Um, from that point. Uh, then basically they're going around. And so they open up the shield in one area. And they're all getting in and they're battling. And then the Wakanda battle and all that. Uh, Bruce Banner is in a Hulk butter, uh, Hulk Buster suit, and then that battle begins against the Black, Black Order. Alright, uh, then it kind of goes back and forth here, it goes back to Titan, and, because that's the Titan of the homeworld, uh, Thanos arrives, and uh, arrives and sees Doctor Strange. Then there's a whole battle. They eventually do. Uh, they eventually do get Thanos using th uh, and using. Um, it, it turns out Star Lord's plan, which is actually pretty cool because it actually kind of worked out until well, Star Lord messed it up. But like Nebula appears and stuff, and then they basically. Uh, Tony Stark and uh, Spider-Man have his arms trapped, and stuff. They all have uh, Drax has his leg, uh, Thanos' leg, and uh, Mantis is on his head trying to put Thanos to sleep. Nebula is there. He's uh, also uh, Nebula is there, and then Star-Lord says, "Well, this is my plan. We actually got you. Now where's Gamora?" And all that, and then he's, uh, he's like kind of uh, crying. Then Nebula uh, says, points out that since he, uh, since Thanos has the Soul Stone, you have to s uh, sacrifice, and therefore Gamora is dead. Star Lord gets upset because, well, he, that's his lover. It's totally in Star Lord's character to do what he did. Yeah, it might be his fault. You could say it's fault, but. That's in, totally in his character. It's literally something he would do. I, I, so basically the fact that if he didn't do it. Would kind of be weird against his character. It just wouldn't make sense. Now it also doesn't make sense because. Earlier at that point. He was actually going to kill Gamora. So it's like. Oh well, well wouldn't he give up Gamora enough to kill her. So why would he be upset now. But. Really? I mean, yeah, but he maybe gave uh, gave up to ki uh, kill her. But still, the fact that he didn't mean that he, he still loves her. I mean, so he still has a right to get upset. And it's totally in his character. And there is a, a uh, scene that's like cut out there's a um a, a deleted scene that really more explains why even though he was ready to give her up and kill her earlier it shows exactly why it that yes maybe earlier he was able to give up but now it really shows that no that's not really much of the case besides that point um we have um what do you call it? Uh, yeah, so basically, Starlark messes up, hits, hits uh, Thanos, and then Thanos escapes. He starts. He, sh he uses the Power Stone to and Space Stone and all that to launch the moon. He's using all the stones and different combinations and all that. Uh, and all that. Then it goes back to um, Wakanda, and then you have all the battles, uh, you have, um, uh, uh, basically, Bruce Banner, um, basically launches Kobit is sitting into the shield, uh, at the top, and killing him, so now we only have the husband and wife of the Black Order, and then we have a lot of battles, eventually, uh, like you have, 
the wife, she sends him more, like, mechanical stuff to, like, kill all more people and stuff. So, Scarlet Witch comes out to save them using the magic that leaves uh, Vision unprotected. And then that's when the husband comes in and uh, the Black Order and basically attacks and gets Vision out of the building and stuff and all that. And then basically there's a huge battle and stuff and uh, it cuts back to, it goes back to like Titan and eventually like Thanos like basically takes them uh, beats them up stabs Tony Stark it literally looked like Tony Stark was gonna die here uh and Thanos was about to uh, saying well we're not you're not the only Tony Stark you're not the only one burdened with knowledge now at first we don't know why his name but I think it makes more sense I mean literally he's the Tony Stark is the one who sent the nuke who out and uh, to pretty much destroy the 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 flagship and all that of the uh, Thanos original army, the aliens and the first Avengers and all that. Uh, so we have them and all that, and pretty much we have everything there. Um, but Doctor Strange tells Thanos if you spare. Uh, Tony Stark, I'll give you the time stone. Dun, dun, dun. What? Didn't he say earlier that he wouldn't do that? Well, here's the thing. Doctor Strange did that because Tony Stark plays an important role in the future of the one future that they win. Alright? Now, there's an interesting theory because... The stones, we know for a fact that the stones are being used when they light up. Well, when Doctor Strange appears, the the stone uh, like ma like appears kind of like magically, and it's lighting up. Now, there's an interesting theory. Basically, the theory is is that Doctor Strange have the time stone or not specifically but send a message to the future people who have the time stone to uh, the one that they won and to give them the time stone of that time and send it back that time stone back and so basically you have the time stone from the future that he gives to Thanos not the time stone of that of the present, the time stone of the future, and so basically after the end of Avengers: Infinity War, there should be the time stone of the present somewhere where Tony Stark can get, but that's for a later st something. All right, so Thanos gets this time stone and leaves. That's from them. It goes back to uh, Wakanda. They're all battling. There's this whole. Female battle between the wife of, of the black or the wife black or you know um, I'm eventually you guys can correct me what her name is I'm just gonna reference that the entire point because I don't remember her name literally like the only ones I can really remember are like Ebony Ma and Kobe Obsidian and that's mostly because I don't know I just watched a lot of YouTube videos on those two characters alone because there's a lot of theories on those characters and Ebony Maw is clearly the best of the Black Order. And unfortunately, they killed him best CGI wise, that it, best pretty much story wise. It just it I mean, it those names are just rememberable. The other two you don't really hear their names at all throughout the movie. And I the only reason why I did know them is watching YouTube and I kind of forgot. I don't know I. Just, their names aren't just rememberable. I mean, I feel like uh, t uh, t uh, Chala's sister should be rememberable, but I'm just really doing bad names today. Um, like, surprise, I would think I would remember her sister's name more than Akoya. You know, I did struggle a little bit to remember that, but I did remember that. But I don't know why I can't remember her, his sister's name. It's kind of weird. Uh, but, uh... Beyond the point, they bow. Then, basically, 
Scarlet Witch, the Scarlet Witch launches the wife into one of the machines and she dies. And we know for a fact she's actually dead because part of her blood gets onto Black Widow. So, and then we have Vision being attacked by, um, oh, and I forgot, there's a scene. Va uh, Thor comes in with Groot and Rocket with because the Stormbreaker has the ability of the uh, Bifrost, which is the thing, the Bifrost is how people can get to Asgard and out, you know, um, for those people who don't know about that. So, for, yeah, so basically you have that, and he comes in, he does a lot of battling, he destroy. he does a lot of damage, uh, and, uh, with his new axe, man, that axe is powerful, it is amazing, um, and then, so we go back, Captain Vision's being attacked by, and he gets stabbed again by, uh, the husband, uh, uh, the leader, the lead. I'm just instead of husband, I'm just gonna call him the leader of the Black Guard. So the leader of the Black Guard is Zoom, and then Captain America goes in to start being that cap. Like I said, that he's kind. Of, I said the leader of the 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 Black Guard is kind of like Captain America. He also has, uh, like superhuman strength, or uh, and they're all battling, and he's he, Steve Rogers tells Vision to go. They're all battling now, but Vision saves Captain America. Even though I, I don't know if he ring well, he was losing, but uh, by stabbing the leader of the Black Order uh, in the chest, killing him, and that's it for the Black Order. Like I said, I was kind of uh, annoyed by that. I kind of wish there was more, but I don't know. I guess more space for the Avengers Four. I guess, um, and then basically Thanos arrives. And he has all he has all the stones except for the mind stone. He knocks out everyone one by one. Well, except for he never faces black. He never faces Black Panther. But I'm pretty sure he doesn't face Black Panther. He faces everyone else. I think I could be actually wrong about that. But he literally knocks out every single one. So you have Scarlet Witch and Vision, and he 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 convinces. Uh, Scarlet Witch to destroy the Mind Stone. And so she's using all her power to destroy the Mind Stone and eventually holds Thanos back with all the Mind Stone. Oh, now there's actually, I forgot, he, when I say he knocks out every single one, even Captain America, even with all his strength, he was actually holding back Thanos' uh, Thanos' fist with the, uh, the Infinity Gauntlet. And he looked like Thanos was like, what? Okay. How is this happening? And then Than uh, so Thanos just punches him. Now in the comic books, that's where he when Captain America dies. But you know whatever. Uh he doesn't die. I'll tell you that. Uh, but basically, he but Scarlet Witch holds Thanos back with all the stones and destroys the Mind Stone. And destroying Vision. Boom. The first time the Infinity Stone is destroyed. Now, that's actually the only time, well, except for one, that battle, one part of Wakanda battle, but literally, like, she's been both weak in the movie and powerful in the movie, and that's probably, like, one of her most powerful scenes in the, killing the one she loves, you know, he's a, kind of a droid, but whatever, uh, she has problems, let's just say, uh, but, uh, yeah, then Thanos says, well, this is no time. There's no time at all. And he uses the time stone to bring back Vision. She's upset. And she tries to attack Thanos. But he just pushes her away. And basically. Well no. Well no. He grabs Vision first. Okay. Then. Like. Basically he then. Skywish tries to attack him. He, uh, she pushes her away. And then Thanos grabs some vision again. I mean, it didn't look like that. I looked at the scene like it's so fast you can't really tell. It didn't look at it, but like you really have to pause it. And I, I don't know. There's YouTube videos on, it, but Thanos actually grabbed 
Vision twice. Now, I'm just going to say, oh, well, like, when Scarlet Witch basically attacked Thanos, he just let go of Vision. Let's just say that. All right. Let's just say it. Okay? We'll fix that. Let's just say that. All right. Because um, you... I, don't, I guess you kind of could tell he's still in Vision's hand, but whatever. It, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm just going to say that. Just I, I'm kind of, I don't really care about continuity errors or errors. I, I would just replace them. Continuity errors are just errors that you are not creative enough to fix yourself in your mind. Let's just say that. All right. Uh, so he basically pulls the Mind Stone out of that, uh, Vision and... And basically, uh, he turns gray or white, well, yeah, like in the comic books, and Vision falls to the ground. And then Thor goes flying in and launches Stormbreaker at Thanos. Thanos uses all five of the, all six of the Infinity Stones and did not block the Stormbreaker. Doesn't make sense, but Stormbreaker stabs Thanos in the chest and then Thor uh, goes in and pushes it more in to pushes it more in and tells him I told you you're going to die for that which is a line earlier in the movie he says and he sa Thanos says you should have gone for the head and then he snaps and then he, Thor says no. Now you could say Thor, it's Thor's fault, but really, I don't know. You could just say that's all part of the end game or the the future that uh, Doctor Strange saw, but it's really a lot of people's fault. I, I wouldn't really blame one person. And really, I feel like if you're going to really blame a person, I would start with Loki, which no one is blaming. So, like I said earlier in the video. Alright? So, Thanos, after Thanos' snap, alright, he basically, go. you see him in this orange world. Now, the orange world is the soul world, and so, uh, this uh, soul world, uh, which is basically the world inside the soul stone. And he talks to uh, baby Gamora, as we're calling her. You know, she's not really a baby, but she's more of just a child. But, okay. Alright. Uh, and basically, he uh, she asks Thanos, did you do it? He says, yes. And then she says, what did it cost? And he says, everything. And... Then we go back to the main reality. Thor says, ask, what do you do? And you see that the Infinity Gauntlet is destroyed. And you could tell from his neck to a little bit of his shoulder, it's damaged. And then he uses the Space Stone to leave. Now, people, there's theories that he used the Time Stone on his chest because there's green light and stuff. But the Stormbreaker falls out. And then when he does the Time Stone like this... You could tell, like, his arms literally, like, burnt, like, down here. And then he goes away. Then, half the universe disappears. People are disappearing all over. It, it shows you different scenes. It starts with the people on Wakanda. Started with uh, Bucky Barnes. Then... Black Widow, oh not Black Widow, sorry, Black Panther, my bad, some of the Quinkandans are disappearing, you have uh, Falcon disappearing, Groot disappearing, not before Groot disappears, he tells uh, Rocket uh, that, uh, he, well Groot says I am Groot, but he says Dad, which makes that seem more emotional, so yeah, more emotional. Uh, and basically, uh, pretty much the only, uh, everyone's like disappearing. Wakanda, the only one, all, all the original Avengers that are on in Wakanda survived, uh, plus Rocket and Steve Rogers, 
Um, not Steve. I'm sorry. Rocket plus Colonel Rhodes, uh, aka War Machine, Okoye, uh, Mbaku. Um, well, we don't really see uh, T'Challa's um, sister, but we feel like she's going to be in Avengers Force. So, um, and. Uh, from that point, we have, um, so we have all the, dis then we go to Titan, all the Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, oh, and I forgot, yeah, it was, we have, yeah, so all of the Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, d vanish, we have, from Titan, so Rocket Raccoon's the only Guardians of the, ga Guardians of the Galaxy that survived this movie, and... Uh, Doctor Strange uh, doesn't survive he, by the snap. And one of the most saddest ones of this, Spider-Man, does not survive either. Uh, and uh, to so Tony Stark does, Nebula does. And so they're only survivors on Titan. And then they, so all the original Avengers plus Nebula, Rocket... Well, pretty much all stuff, they survived, and all the original Avengers, for Avengers 4, because Avengers 4 will probably be the last of the original Avengers. Uh, so, from that point, and then, after that, we, pretty much the end of the movie is Thanos retiring on a farm, which we now know is Titan, uh, for, uh, which, um... Because of a picture that said that looked exactly like the Sinister Time, but he's retiring just like in the comic books. He's becoming a farmer, but you could tell he's really not okay. He's really injured. He's limping and all that. But I don't know. It ends that scene, and that's the end of the movie. My thoughts. I loved the movie. I really loved the movie, but the ending. I just. Didn't know how to feel about the ending. I just... I don't know why they choose all the original Avengers. I get why they use the, all the original Avengers. I'm actually happy about that. But really, all of these new characters... It was like... Wait, wait what? Why all the new characters? I, I was like... Ugh. And I should have known this coming. I watched a lot of YouTube. I knew in the comic books... This is what happens. I... New, I and like the snap is so special in the comic books, and there's Avengers Four is supposed to be the sequel to Avengers Infinity War. It's supposed to finish it. I should have realized that this was going to happen, but yet I still didn't. I still didn't think it was going to happen. I, but it did. And I, I don't know. I just couldn't feel anything about that scene. I just felt weird. But I have to say it makes sense and I do know that all those characters that died in the Snapshot, that's what they're calling it on YouTube, uh, that they're all going to come back. That's my thoughts on the movie. The movie was great. It was really good that they pulled off a movie like this. They, it's definitely a culmination of all the movies together. It was nicely done. I mean, it did... The, Going back and forth was a little annoying, but, you know, it was really well uh, uh, well done, and really uh, done, and the Rooster Bros did a great job. And I can't wait for Avengers 4. Now, the post credit scene. In the post credit scene, we have uh, uh, Nick Fury and uh, Hill... Uh, that's her last name. Um, Agent Hill, I should say, actually, that makes, it sounds better that way. They're in their car, and they find, the car, like, spins out of control and lands in front of them. They walk out of the car and see that no one's in it. Then they see a helicopter crashing into a building. This is the chaos of the, uh, Snapshot people are disappearing, and then... Hill, Agent Hill disappears, and, uh, what's her, um, 
Nick Fury walks by people that are disappearing. He walks his car to pull out something, presses it, and then he disappears and lands on the ground. And it shows the Captain uh, Marvel symbol that he's calling her. And that's the, it. That's the only post credit scene. Um, okay, so they die too. In that. But it really shows the chaos of the snapshot. And it's probably going to show a lot more in Avengers 4. They did show a little bit of it. Uh, in, some of it in uh, at the uh, in a post credit scene of Wasp, uh, Ant Man and the Wasp. But once I see Ant Man and the Wasp one more time, I'll have a review on that. I there are a little bit. I'm not gonna say any more about Ant Man. I do want to say more about it, but that's mostly because of my thoughts for Avengers Four. But other than that, that's pretty much it for this review. And I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you, goodbye.